first and foremost, I would like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Rakar Kedash, double honors to the elders of GMS, who I learned this truth from. I would like to give a salutation to all the Akim out there that's preaching this word in righteousness and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Also a shalom all to the Israelite foreigners out there, the speck of bird, who are going to come looking like other nations, but who are Israelites. Shalom all, man. And I'm going to get right into it. Today's topic is going to be repent. Now is the time to repent, man. Because all hell is about to break loose, man. And Yahweh boy, Shem Yahweh Shah is about to come down with great judgment, man. So for you Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and also you Israelite foreigners out there, man, now is the time to repent, man. Now is that time, man. Because the door of salvation is steadily closing, man. And this thing is getting ready to wind on down, man. Because the devil, Esau, is getting ready to come down with great wrath, man. All right. And with that being said, let's get the book of Acts, man. This is Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I'm going to read that again, man. Because in the day of judgment, man, you don't want to have to give account for your sins, man. You want your sins to be blotted out and turn back to the ways of Yahweh B'Shem, Yahweh Shah, and your forefathers, for you Israelites out there. So now is the time to repent, man. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, man. All right? You won't be found guilty in that day, man. Because, hey, man, Yahweh B'Shem, Yahweh Shah, man, he said judgment going to start at the house of Israel first, man. So once again, man, to you Negroes, Latinos, Native American, Indians, Seminole Indians out there, you Israelite foreigners out there, now is the time to repent, man. Okay? Repent, man. But, hey, two-thirds ain't going to repent, man. It's all about the elect, you know? The one-third is going to repent, man, you know? Let's continue on, though, man. Let's get Second Peter. This is Second Peter three and nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, man. So, hey, man, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, he don't want to see his own people perish, but it's already written that two thirds of you Negroes, Latino, Native American Indians, and Seminole Indians, you're going to perish, man. All right? But for the one-third, the elect out there, man, now is the time to repent, man. Repent, okay? Because this isn't for the whole house of Israel, man. You know? Let's go to Ezekiel, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 18. Verses 21 to 23. Ezekiel 18, chapter 21 to 23. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have committed and keep my statutes, and who are the only one that can sin, and who are the only one that was given statute, laws, and commandments, man? You so-called Hebrew Israelites, man, because the Lord have not dealt so with any other nation, man. So repentance is only open for you, not the other nations, man. Let me start it over again, though. I just had to put that out there. This is Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 21 to 23. But if the wicked would turn from all his sins that he have committed and keep all my statutes, talking to you Israelites, 
and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. And his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Said the Lord God, Yahweh, and not that he should return from his ways and live. So, hey, man, once again, man, Yahweh should be our shot, man. You know, he want our people to get it right. But, hey, it's already ordained that only the elect is going to get it right, man. You know? Because the elect was with Yahweh, Shem Yahweh, shot from the beginning, man. Only the elect is going to hear this word and repent, man. You know? Repent, man. You know, because this is the thing, too. There's no harm in falling. The harm is not getting back up, man. We all fall down, man. But get back up, man. Don't, don't feel no pity for yourself, man. This ain't the time to feel sorry for yourself, man. This is the time to stand on your watch and stand stern, man. All right? And be sober and vigilant, man. You know? Let's get revelations, man. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, man. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent, man. That's right, man. And the Lord remove your candlestick out of his place. You already know that it is, man. That's judgment, man. Okay. Hey, let's read that over again, man. This is Revelation 2 and 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent, man. The only way to get up out of this judgment that's coming, man, is to repent, man. Repent, man. Okay? And try to the best of your ability to follow the statute and law and the commandments of the Lord, man. Because this judgment is getting ready to go out, man. Everything that's in play, man. All right? If you notice, you got, <laughs> you had the doggone ship stuck out there in what? In the little uh, Suzal Canal, right? With all type of merch, right? On that ship, right? But that's not the thing, man. There's a shortage of goods out here, man. There's about to be a food famine out here, man. Also, the guy from the Fed, and I'm not talking about for as the FBI. I'm talking about the Federal Commerce who control the money system. Hey, man. He's going ahead and coming with the digital dollar, man. Why is that, man? Because why? Inflation is starting to set in on the money, man. Why? We just wrote out all these stimulus checks, man. Okay? Just flooded the money. I mean, just flooded the economy, all right, with this fiat currency because we're not even spending money, man. Real money is gold and silver, man. Money has a medium, intrinsic value. It's a difference between currency and money. Money holds value, man. All right? But, hey, in a minute, everybody's going to have this understanding, man. In a minute, man. All right? Remember what happened in Venezuela? It still happened in Venezuela. And throughout other parts of the earth, man, inflation has already set in throughout different parts of the earth, man. But, hey, it's saving the best for last, which is America, man. Because the average American, the average American is very spoiled, man. All right? Very arrogant, man. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen when they go into the store to buy a carton of eggs and the carton of eggs is $60, man? <laughs> then you're going to have the understanding of what inflation means, man. All right? Let's continue on, though, man. Let's go to Proverbs, man. This is Proverbs 28 and 13. Because once again, man, you're going to understand... By them writing all those stimulus checks, man, that wasn't a good thing, man. Trying to keep the economy afloat, man. It's done, man. You can't do it, man. It's done. 
You can't continuously to print out money, man, and you have nothing back in the money, man. You can't continue to do that, man. All right? But, hey, soon everybody will understand this. This is Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that cover his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confess and forsake them shall have mercy, man. That's the thing, man. And you know, it's a big thing that went on in Israel, you know, this week <laughs> with the Passover, you know, with uh, with a certain cap, Sakari in them. Hey, man, you know, I don't know Sakari, man, but hey, Sakari, humble yourself and repent, man. Well, you know, like I said, man, there ain't no shame in falling, man. The shame come when you want to harden yourself and come with pride, man. All right? That's where destruction fall in at, man. Humble yourself. Pick yourself back up, man, and keep pushing, man. All right? That's all I got to say on that matter, man, at the end of the day, man. But at the end of the day, it's all about humility, man. You know, humility, man. All right? Let me read that again, man. This is Proverbs 28 and 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confess and forsake them shall have mercy, man. That's what the Lord is looking for, man. You know, he's looking for you to what? To tell your sins, man. All right, don't try to hide them, man. He will show you mercy, man. Because in a minute, you're getting ready to see. It's about to be that time, man. All right? You know, Satan don't like hearing that message, man. But it don't matter. The message is going to go out, you know? You no, know, Satan out here doing this job. I got to do mine, man. All right? Go to the book of Luke, man. This is Luke 13 and 3. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish, man. Hey, man, that's the only way to salvation, man got to repent from your sins, man. You have to repent, man. You're not going to inherit or walk into the kingdom of heaven without repenting, man. Okay? Because we all guilty, man. You know, we all unworthy, man. But through repentance, man, through repentance, man, is, is, a, is a step into salvation, man. You know, it's a must. You know, you must repent in order to receive salvation, man. There's no way around it, man. Okay? You can't have it no other way, man. Jake out here trying to look for alternate routes, man. Nah, man, you got to humble yourself and repent, man. All right? Let me read that again, man. Luke 13 and 3, man. And that was straight to the point. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish, man. All right? It's just simple as that, man. You know? Nothing complex about it. Either you do or you don't, man. And if you decide to uh, repent... Hey, man, you should have life. If you don't repent, you should have death, man. You know, there's no in-between in this thing, man. All right? No in-between whatsoever. Okay. Let's get, uh, let's get John, man. This first John. First John 1 and 9, man. All right? At the end of the day, man, you know, we all got to keep fighting, man. You know, endure it to the end, man. It's all about enduring to the end, man. Okay? This is uh, 1 John 1 and 9, man. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Let's read that again, man. Once again, man, you got to repent, man. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness, man. Because once again, man, none of us is worthy, man, you know, for salvation, man. But only through repentance, man, can we receive salvation, man. Once again, man, time, the door of salvation, man, is steadily closing, man. But once again, there's no 
gray area. Either repent or die. Simple as that, man. But hey, man, you got those out here that's full of pride. All right? Full with pride. Pride lead to death every time, man. Every time, man. All right? Let's go to Second Chronicles, man. This is Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Chapter 7, verse 14, man. All right. If my people, who are the Lord's people, man, the Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, Indians, Seminole Indians, as well as you Israelite foreigners of Speckle Bird. If Amen. our people, all right, all right, Amen. which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and will heal their land, man. Hey, man, simple as that, man. But hey, what's the first thing you got to do? You got to humble yourself, man. All the arrogant people and the people that's full of pride, man, they're going to die out here, man. All right? It's all about humility, man. All about humility, man. You know? All about humility, man. Because we have all sinned, man. So now it's the time to repent, man. You know? For you Israelites, that is. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Acts, man. Because you are the nations, man. Guess what, man? Your time is up. You know? There's no hope for salvation for y'all. None whatsoever. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Yahweh Shah for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, man. Let's read that again, man. And Peter was a was the cornerstone that this, this gospel was built on, man. Okay? The apostle Peter, man. This is uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahweh Shah for the remissions of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost man which is a beautiful thing man because the Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit is going to show you all things man that is the comfort that Yahweh Shah said he will leave behind for us man because without that comfort the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit man we wouldn't came back into the knowledge that we was Israelites man one thing about the Lord, man, Yahweh Shem Yahweh is bound by his word, man. He cannot lie, man. You know, whatever decree he set out, you best believe it's going to happen, man. All right? So this is why it's so important to repent, man, before the day of judgment, man. All right? Let's go to Acts chapter 17, man. This is Acts chapter 17. Verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God, Yahweh, winked at, but now command of all men everywhere to repent. Okay, because this word is going out, man, throughout the four corners of the earth, man. You know? And how is this word going out through the four corners of the earth, man? Through the internet, man. All right? The world wide web. All right? So this gospel has reached the four corners of the earth, man. This is why you keep seeing destruction, destruction coming upon, man. Right before I came out here, there was a situation that happened in D.C., man. All right? A guy uh, ran into some cops, man. I think he killed one of the cops, man. But I believe the officers ended up killing him as well, man. You know? But we in those times, man. You're going to see these type of events continue to escalate man then we just had the mass uh, another mass shooting out there in california right death is about to reign supreme out here man because hey man why is that because we're in the day of the lord man and because this gospel is going out throughout the four corners of the earth man all right this is why it's so important to repent man you know why the door of salvation is still open man all right
Let's go to Ezekiel, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30 to 32. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Who's the house of Israel once again? You Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and similar Indians, man, as well as you Sereca Bird, you Israelite foreigners, man. Everyone according to his ways, said the Lord God, Yahweh, repent, turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgression whereby ye have transgressed make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die O house of Israel for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth said the Lord God Yahweh wherefore turn yourself and ye live ye hey there you have it man the Lord said he take no pleasure but nevertheless man he is bound by his word man you know if you don't repent, you shall surely die, man. You know, if you are an Israelite. <laughs> okay? So lock you, fam. No, it's just that plain and simple, man. There's no other way to look at it, man. All right, let's go to the book of Luke. Man. This is Luke chapter 15, verse 7, man. Now say now he got the wind kicking up. It don't matter, man. The word still gonna go out, man. The word still gonna go out, regardless. This is Luke chapter 15, verse 7. I say unto you that likewise, Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance, man. So, hey, think about that, man. You know, the heavens rejoice over a sinner that repent, man, more than those that have already, you know, that don't need repentance, man. All right, let's read that again, man. This is uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just person, right? Somebody who's already in the truth, right? Which need no repentance, man. All right? So, hey, amen. The heavens rejoice, man. You know, when the children of Israel repent and come back to the statute and laws commandments, man, come back to your Yahweh and your shot, man. There you go. That's a glorious moment in the heavens, man. All right? But once again, man, keep in mind, man, there's no two way about it, man. Either repent or die, man. There's no other way to look at this thing, man. You know? But soon, very soon, those people of the world will find this out the hard way, man. Mm -hmm. All right? All right? Either one way or another, man. You know? But once again, the door of salvation is steadily closing, man. So now is the time to repent, man. For you Israelites, that is. You know? This is 2 Chronicles chapter 30. Verse 89, man. Second Chronicles, chapter 30, verse 89. Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord. And enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. 
I'm going to read that part over again, man. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 8 and 9. But this is verse 8. Now be ye not stiff-necked, as your fathers were, but yield yourself unto the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if ye turn again unto the Lord, your brethren, your children shall find compassion before them, that lead them captive, so they shall come again to this land. What land is that talking about, man? Our homeland, Israel, man. All right. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you if ye return unto him. So, hey, man. <laughs> In order to turn back to him, man, you must repent. So lock you, family. long-suffering man the Lord is merciful man the Lord is faithful the Lord is true man to his word man if you seek him man and repent man all right he will show mercy unto you man but once again man if you don't repent if you want to be stiff-necked arrogant all right full of pride full of arrogance not humble yourself man it's over for you man all right Let's go to the book of James, man. This is James chapter 4. Verse 8, man. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins as well, man. You know? That's a good thing too, though, man. But first and foremost, you still must repent, man. You know? More than anything, man. Repent, repent, repent. More than anything, man. But charity is another way to walk away a multitude of sins as well, though, man. Once you repent, though, <laughs> you know. Let's go to Mark, man. This is Mark chapter 1, verse 15, man. You know. chapter 1 verse 15 and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand repent and believe the gospel man for you Israelites out there man the time of the kingdom is at hand man repent and believe the gospel man all right believe the words of this Bible man you know because as you see they're coming to pass man you know but once again man Two-thirds of you Israelites, man, you're going to learn this the hard way, man. But nevertheless, you shall learn, man. You know? One way or another. You know? One way or another, man. Let's go to Ezekiel, man. This is Ezekiel. Chapter 3. Verse 17 and 18. Because Yahweh was Shimei Abishai got his prophets out here throughout the four corners of the earth telling and trying to bid you Israelites to the marriage, man. Telling y'all to repent, man. All right? So you cannot say or use the excuse that you didn't know, man. Because, hey, man, by now, everybody know about the Hebrew Israelites, man. Everybody know, man. Everybody know. Whether they act like they don't know or not, man. Regardless, everybody know, man. 
This is Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Wind out here blowing, but it's all good though. The word's still going to go out though. It's a beautiful thing, man. Beautiful thing. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word in my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at his hand, man. So it's the job, man, of us to call ourselves prophets, man, to tell our people this, man, to tell our people that judgment coming, man, that evil times are coming, man, to tell our people to repent, man, because we don't. The blood is on our hands, man. All right? You know? Such Ray boys, you don't want to be seen today, man. <laughs> you don't want to be seen today. It's all good, though, man. The word must go out, man. The word must go out, man. No matter what happens. All right? No matter what happens, man. Let's stay in the book of Ezekiel, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6 and 7, man. You know, the spirits get riled up, man, when the word come out. But it's all good, though. This is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6 and 7. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Hey, man, we out here blowing the trumpet, telling our people, a great sword is coming, man. A sharp sword that has been furbished, man, is coming, man. All right, let me read that over again, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6. But if the watchman, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not born, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the words at my mouth and warn them from me. Okay? When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou does not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at his hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, and he do not turn from his way, he shall surely die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul, man. So, hey, man, that's why I'm out here, man, to deliver my soul, man, to repent and tell my people to repent, man. Start with myself first, man, you know? Because, hey, man, once again, man, we in, the, we in these weak bodies, man. We in these fleshly bodies, man. You know, these bodies are weak, man. And the biggest weapon that we got is prayer, man. Prayer to Yahweh, but shouldn't Yahweh shop, man. All right. Let's go to Isaiah, man. This is Isaiah 5081, man. Cry aloud, spread not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sin. This is why you see the brothers out here throughout the four corners of the earth doing this, man. We're lifting our voice up like a trumpet, man. Showing our people this, man. All right? This is what we're doing, man, throughout the four corners of the earth, man. All right? Giving our people fair warning, man. Okay? Let's stay in the book of Isaiah. 
This is Isaiah. Chapter 62. Verse 6, man. Matter of fact. Verse 7 as well. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, man. That's right, man. That's why we come out here week in and week out, man, to tell our people to repent, man. Repent, man. So you'll, found, you'll be found worthy in the day of the Lord, man. In the dreadful day of the Lord, may I say. Verse 7. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth, man. So this is why we out here week in and week out, man. You know, to continue to preach it, man, to the Lord as well, man. You know, do what he commanded us to do, man. But nevertheless, man, we out here to give our people a fair warning from him. Not a warning from us. No, a warning from the Lord, man. Repent, man, or die, because great judgment is getting ready to come down the pipe, man. All right? Great judgment, man. Great judgment. Let's go to Matthew, man. This is Matthew. Chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 5 and 6. And these 12, Yahweh Shah sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. So this is what we're preaching to our people, man. To you Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, similar Indians. Also, you Israelite foreigners as well out there too, man. Because you're going to have Hebrew Israelites that's going to look like people from other nations. But their bloodline go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. You know, this is a seed line thing. This is not no color thing, man. Because we've been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, man. So Israelites are going to come looking like a speckled bird, man. Like the Lord said. The Lord said his heritage until him is like a speckled bird, man. All right? So this is why we go out, man. You know? Because once again, man, we were all scattered amongst the Gentiles, man. The natural Gentiles. That is, all right? Salaf, you family. in the book of Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 22 verse 9. This wind out here blowing today pretty good but it's all good though. That's a beautiful thing man. Want to see how bad you really want to preach this word man. <laughs> Go ye therefore into the highway and as many as ye find bid them to the marriage man. All right. Hey, I'm going to read verse 10 as well, man. So those servants went out to the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both good, both bad, and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. There you have it, man. This is what we're doing, man. You know, whether you be good or bad, nevertheless, man. But that's, that's up to your house shot and the angels to sort out, you know. Once again, man. The key is to repent, man. The key is definitely to repent, man. Repentance, man. You know? But nevertheless, man, we got a job to do, man. Regardless of what obstacles come in the way, man, it don't stop, man. You know, number one thing is preach the word. No excuses, man. You know, if you fall, get back up, man, and preach this word, man. Because we're trying to endure to the end, man. Hopefully we can receive the kingdom of heaven, man. 
you know? If we of the hopeful elect, man, and I pray that I am of the hopeful elect, you know? But hey, that's all in the hands of your Bashim, your Abishado, man, you know? <clears throat> this is Jeremiah, chapter 28, verse 8, man. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence, man. This is what we're telling our people that's coming down the pipe, man. This is what's coming down the pipe, man. The guys that you see out here throughout the four corners of the earth preaching this gospel, man, these are the prophets of old, man, because everybody come back in their lot, man. All right? Everybody, you know? Let's go to second address, man. So, this is second address. It's a lock, you fam. This is second address, chapter nine. Verses I'm going to read verses 1 to 5, man. Second Edges, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the earth which he made. Before I got started today, a gentleman came up here, was talking about he seen orbs, and he asked me what they were. I told him those were the chariots of Israel, man. So, hey, man, you got sightings of UFOs all over the earth, man. Well, hey, man. Those are not just UFOs, man. Those are the chariots of Israel, man. Those are the angels in there operating those, man. There's so many uh, UFO sightings there, man, that the military had to come out and declassify this stuff, man. You know, the military did. Because they can't hide it no more. And this is why the Lord came with this technology. And, and definitely these cell phones, man. You know, these cell phones, man. All right. To lock your family, the wind blew the stand over, but nevertheless, man, the work gonna continue, man. All right, this is Second Edris, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5, man. All right, he answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the sign past, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, for like all slack you, for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. You know, there you have it, man. And you're seeing the end being made manifested 
right before your eyes, man, those of you that have vision to see, man. Spiritual vision to see, that is. This is 2 Andrews chapter 8, verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them, and the latter time shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride, man. And this is what's coming, man. This is why we're warning our people for, man. This is coming down the pipe, man. This is 2 Edris chapter 15, verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and, with, and destroy all the land thereof, man. And what is today modern day Egypt, man? America, man. America go by many names. Egypt is one of them, man. You know, uh, Babylon, the Roman Empire, Sodom and Gomorrah, nevertheless, man. And we see we got a pestilence on the earth. That's a plague, man. All right. Let's uh, stay in 2nd Edges 15 chapter. Let's jump down to verse 15 to 19. For the sword and their destruction draw near, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and the sword is in our hand. For there shall be sedition among men, and invade one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princesses, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able. For because of the pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and man shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and the spoil of goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation, man. This is what's coming, man. Very soon, man. And it's going to happen swift and brutal, man, and abruptly, man. Okay? I'm going to jump down to verse 49. I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. Amen. This is what's coming, man. All right? This is what's coming down the pipe, man. This is uh, Second Edris, chapter 16. Verse 13 to verse 16. So this is Second Edges chapter 16, verse 13 to 16. For strong is the right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shoot are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the earth. So what type of arrows that's talking about? Is that talking about a natural arrow? No. There's a movie called Broken Arrow with John Travolta. In that movie, Broken Arrow, the Broken Arrow is referred to as a nuclear missile. This is what the military called nuclear missiles, man, one that's stolen, a broken arrow, such as in the scriptures as well, man. Okay? Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundations of the earth. Like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, will turn them not backwards. So the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again, man. This is what's coming, man. All right. This is what's coming. You know, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. All right. The Lord said it was coming, and it shall surely come to pass, man. Okay? Let's get the book of Jeremiah, man. Because this is Jacob's trouble, man. This is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 5 to 7. For thus said the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man do travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. That's what type of fear is going to come upon the earth and upon man. So if the man is going to be scared like this, what about the woman and the children? Verse 7, Alas, 
for that day is great, and so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved up out of it. That's talking about only the elect of Jacob, man. No, not the whole, not the whole house, okay? Not all of Jacob, rather should I say. All right. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, man. This is Isaiah chapter 66. Verse 15 and 17, man. Because there's a misconception out there that the Lord is coming back handing out cupcakes. No. That's a lie. That couldn't be farther from the truth, man. The Lord is coming back, and the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. The Lord is coming back to kill, man. The Lord is a man of war, contrary to popular belief. This is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 to 17. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right. They that sanctified themselves and purified themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst eating swine flesh and the abomination in the mouth shall be consumed together, said the Lord, man. So, amen. <laughs> Once again, the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. The Lord's not coming back to play no games, man. All right. And speaking of the chariots, let's get a couple of chariot scriptures, man. Okay. Because once again, there's more and more UFO sightings, man. And just like Independence Day, everybody got camera phones. <laughs> so, hey, you're going to see these chairs really show themselves, man. Because we're in the last days, man. And they're going to continue on, man. All right? This is, uh... This is Psalm chapter 68, verse 17. Man. The chariots of God, Yahweh, are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place, man. So, amen. When the Lord come back in the second coming, man, amen, he gonna be leading the charge, man, with the, with the, with the, Big, humongous chariot, man. Look like a mountain, Andrew said, man. Look like the side of a mountain. That's how big the chariot is, man. Or what the world ignorantly call UFOs, man. All right. This is Ecclesiasticus, which is Sirach in the Apocrypha. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 5. Verse 2. It's a lock, your family. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5, verse 2, Salaki. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all they look for. Let's talk about those chariots beaming up the hopeful elect, man. All right? Hey, we came here in slave ships. 
but we're gonna leave his styling and profiling. All right? Let's get Zach around. Zechariah chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What sees thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. And then said unto me, This is the curse that go over the face of the whole earth. These chariots, man. For everyone that still shall be cut off as on the side according to it. And everyone that swerve shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, said the Lord of hosts. It shall enter into the house of the thief and to the house of him swerve falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. There you have it, man. And I'm going to end it. Ecclesiasticus, Ecclesiastes, Salakia, Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So that being said, I hope this lesson was edifying. I hope those who came across it received some type of edification. But until next time, all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Rakaqadash. Shalom, family.